Terry Hodgkinson Sifu here. I'm in uh, one of my favorite places to be in, which is the forest. I've just been training out here for a while now, and I thought I'd uh, take a little video. Um, as you know, in the Chung Fu martial arts meditation style, or school, I should say, we have a number of principles that we do our best to adhere to so that we can work towards perfection. I'm not saying you'll ever be perfect or anybody will ever be perfect, but that's what we're working towards. Of course, you want to learn this so that you can forget about it. And what I mean by that is you want to learn these principles and practice them to the point where they become subconscious traits. They are simply an aspect of who you are at the deepest levels of your being. And then your mind is freed up so that you can use your holistic awareness. Uh, some people call it situational awareness. And now I'm referring to as an example of the self-defense aspects um, or the sparring aspects or the combatives. There's different names people call it by. But also we have the healing aspects too. And your awareness is just as much needed in healing arts as it is in combative arts. So no matter which way you look at it, you need to free your mind up from all the technical things that you've learned so that you can allow your energy and you can allow your awareness, your intuitive awareness to flow. So the first thing is, of course, you've heard me say it many times, biomechanics, and that is the ability that when you're doing something, no matter what it is, that you have ultimate control over what you're doing as in the form of it. You want to make sure that the form is precise. Okay? And you know the simplest example I can give you is if you're aiming at something and you're off track and you veer off, you don't hit it, you've wasted your time, you've wasted your energy, and you probably just got yourself hit in return because you didn't actually get to apply uh, properly what you had set out to do in, in that moment. So you left yourself very vulnerable even if you were not reacted upon or acted upon and you didn't succeed. The next thing of course is muscle calibration and muscle calibration is knowing what muscles to tense and what muscles to tighten that allow you the ability to move quickly and then the ability to uh, have better impact power. So for speed, obviously you just want to use a few muscles to maintain some sort of structure. If I was using no muscle right now with my hands up, then my arms would look like this but I have to use some muscle tension to be able to hold my arms up in this position, okay? Now, I have to isolate those muscles though and know which ones those are to hold my hands up, to hold my arms up, so that I'm not using all my muscles because then I'm gonna slow down my speed when I go to punch. You still want your arms to relax so you can get that fast, okay? And then of course, you need to manipulate it again uh, if you're doing a, a more powerful strike because with speed you can do quick things but you want to be able to do a few quick ones perhaps for stunning but when that one that you want to land and to really be effective you want to have the speed but then you want to have the power behind it and that takes a successive muscle uh, calibration so you might have them relax to a certain point and then tense and then relax again. It's very quick and eventually, as I said before, you wanna get this to a point where it's all controlled um, on an expertise level by your subconscious mind. So your conscious mind is freed up, okay? We move into the vital mindset, which is the seriousness of the moment. So making sure that your attention is really focused on the moment and what is needed in that moment and that goes for paying attention to your intuitive awareness your ability to sense things rather than be caught up by the mind and be caught up in the past thinking about something or be caught up in the future worrying about something so it's that vital mindset that helps you to stay centered that helps you to stay simply I want to say in control but I don't mean in control to a degree where you know, you're all tense and you're, you're trying to control everything that happens because in a particular healing situation or in a, in a combative situation, you might not have control over everything. You have to sort of go with the way things happen and be in the moment and allow yourself to intuitively um, take care of what happens in the moment. Um, adjustments, changes, 
things happen very quickly and you have to be right there with them so that you can change and adjust and, and continue to flow with them if you're going to be one with the situation. Okay, we move on, we look at supreme value. Your supreme value is what is the greatest purpose of what you're doing and does it make sense, okay? So if I'm going to do, as an example, um, and this is a stupid example, but it just came to my head, if I'm gonna do a front kick and hit somebody in the shin, that's probably not the supreme best value, you know, the supreme value of that kick and where it should really be delivered. Uh, perhaps the groin is a better target, okay? Perhaps the lower stomach is a better target. Uh, you know, if you're on the side, yeah, maybe you could kick into the thigh if you just wanted to give the person a charley horse, but kicking at their shin, not necessarily the greatest targets to use that particular kick with. 